Hello there, welcome back to World of Worship Legends with Dirk. Today we are taking a look at a boat that has been shunned. Pushed out of our minds into the farthest reaches of our ports to collect dust following a savage hit from the nerf hammer. Today I'm here to tell you though that the Kleber is still extremely strong. It just takes a little amnesia to forget what it once was before, basically super powered. If you didn't play the original launch Kleber, then you don't know what you missed out on and be content with what you have now and don't ask too many questions. But without further ado, strap yourselves in and let's take a look at the gunboat Kleber. After the meme or meta Kleber video, link in the description below, I haven't really touched this ship. Because once you had a Wagyu beef burger, you don't want a Big Mac. But reluctantly, I set my expectations to zero and fired this thing up as a gunboat. Basically picturing a Kabarosk playstyle, and I took this thing out. And I'm gonna be honest, even if I was sucking, losing, or not getting much damage, this boat is still fun. It's ridiculously fast, and blasting around the map at near 60 knots is one of the best experiences you can have in World of Warships. But I was surprised at how well she did. We started racking up some good games, lots of damage, a couple YOLOs here and there, sure, but it was a blast. Before we go any further, let's look at this setup. Violet with Billy and Vinny. Quick fix for me is a must to allow you to keep moving after taking HE damage. Flank speed means the difference in 3 knots of cruising speed overall, but go all out is a very very strong perk and I would probably recommend that. Basically every time you activate it you will drop your concealment rating by 20%. So 6 kilometers drops down to 4.8 kilometers as long as the speed boost is active. So you can kind of weigh out which you would rather have. The other perks, Perceptive, Sidestep, and Torchin. In the modules, Aiming Systems Mod 1, Rudder, Concealment, and drop those Torpedo modules for the main battery mod. What we are left with, 25,000 HP, 5.8 second reload, 12% fire chance, cruising speed, 48.5 knots. That's with full speed ahead and without a speed booster. And a 6 kilometer detection range. All around, not too bad. This map of course kind of limited how much long range gunboating and fire starting I could do, but it didn't really matter. Who cares if you have the fastest boat in the lobby? When an island is useful to use as an escape route and for cover, use it. And that's what we did here to set up a little crossfire to try to help our Alaska, who graciously came over to help us out. Many games pushing this side on A, you don't always get your team to come support you. Normally, I would say stay moving in Kleber, because the insane top speed is going to be your saving grace. The speed is your best defense. Most captains are going to have a hard time hitting a ship that is doing 45 knots maneuvering, much less one that is doing 60 knots. But again, this island was necessary, and also I was hoping to set up a little combination strike on the Yamato after the Alaska was dead. I knew there was a destroyer also somewhere in A cap because it was capped earlier, so that guy was on my hit list as well. With Kleber, anytime you get a chance to engage from further away, you're going to be better off. You don't have a smokescreen to erase your screw up and to help you out of a pinch. If you commit too early, like if I got too close to that Lo Yang and he used his sonar on me, yeah, it could have been the end. There might not have been any getting away. So yes, committing too early to a cap, to a rush, or to a 1v1 fight with destroyers, sometimes you could have a hard time getting out of it, or you could lose a lot of health. And that kind of explains my Wusta ish play style here. So the Yamato. I was hoping to get a lovely dev strike, but after digging into the statistics on Kleber, it has the highest torpedo reaction time out of any destroyer at legendary tier. These torpedoes can be spotted from 
you know, 1.8 kilometers away. They're not very fast. So I think I had the reaction time figured at about eight or nine seconds. Pretty darn slow. Not only that, but it was it was pretty obvious that I was going to be torping. And now a brief break from our regularly scheduled programming to show what nefarious things I really had planned for that Yamato. Clabert and Islands go together like peanut butter and jelly, and enemy battleship captains should realize this. When a Clabert comes around the corner at 50 knots, there's not much you can do except, I don't know, soil yourself. When the opportunity arises, simply use an island to mask your approach at high speed and... There you have it. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. The other thing, being careful about engaging enemy destroyers one-on-one. -on -one. So we are calling this a gunboat destroyer. Sure, fine. But compared to gearing and the Kabarosk, you will get your lunch eight, basically. Those ships have a much higher damage output with their faster reloads. Even with a 16 Vinnie Mordoff, we only got our reload down to, you know, sub six seconds. It's it's not very fast. And yes, you have eight guns, but in a straight up duel, if you have committed, a lot of tier seven destroyers are going to even give you a run for your money. So be careful when picking your one on one duels, even though we are calling this a gunboat. Anyways, that kind of cleans up this flank. And with the great speed of this boat, we can make it to the other side of the map pretty quickly. In a discussion with some of my Discord mates, by the way, if you want to join a great Discord with some knowledgeable players, the link will be in the description below. But anyways, we were talking about the four legendary destroyers and which one would be considered the best. And that's a really hard thing to say right now because each one is good as its own respective thing. And I want to cover this in a future video, but basically the Kleber we landed on it's great for solo carrying, basically because you could play two flanks at the same time. You could be anywhere that your team needs you because of its extreme speed. And that's a perfect example here. We finished off this side, we took care of what we needed to, and now we are headed all the way to the other side of the map to help out there. Some destroyers can't accomplish that. Gearing would be the shining example with a top speed of 36 knots, it's not very quick to get around the map. Speaking of gearings, we have one to take out right now. And I'm being cautious because I thought that he might have went ahead and torped this gap. He didn't. But luckily we're going to try to see if we can take him out before we take too much damage ourselves. I knew he was low health or I definitely wouldn't have pushed into him quite like this. And again, fearing the torpedoes, we are going to use the sunken carcass of our blue teammate who did good in a cap and for taking a lot of health from the gearing. So shout out to that player. The game looks like it's five on four at this time, and we're going to finally get out in the open water and use the speed of this thing. We have one more destroyer to worry about another gearing. I would say that in most gunboating that I do and that I play, my primary objective is to sink the enemy destroyers. But you have to be careful with that in Club Bear, and oftentimes I find it best, if you can, to only engage enemy destroyers head-on when you have some supporting teammates. So that's kind of how we got the Loyang out of the game, and uh, our, our friendly Friesland took the brunt of it with the gearing, and we were kind of just able to mop up. And I'll be the first to say it doesn't always work out like that. Sometimes you're going to be in situations where you have to fight it out. Luckily, the Kleber gets one such win button, as I affectionately call it. The reload booster is good for 15 seconds, and it will greatly increase your damage output. Use the tactics I talk about with Russian destroyers, and if you know you're going to get in an engagement, be angled out and ready to run at a moment's notice. I was fortunate here, this Fletcher player was too focused on launching torpedoes, and um, I think I just took so much of his health early on, it demoralized him and made it pretty easy to mop him up. The good thing about the high speed of Kleber is you can choose these engagements in any engagement you don't want to take or you don't think you'll win, simply run away from it. 
Before the nerf, Claire was definitely all about her torpedo armament. But with their reduced range, I have kind of been thinking of them as more of a defensive weapon, or maybe to use in special cases. The Go All Out perk would be one of those special cases. Remember, that's the perk that's going to reduce your concealment by 20%. So using that strategy, you could pop your speed boost and get in pretty close to an enemy ship to unleash your torpedoes stealthily. On this build, had we been using it, it would have got our concealment down to 4.8 kilometers. From experience, I would say you need to be careful doing this because at 55 or more knots, you will often get a lot closer than you think you will and you could get spotted. So the gearing pops up and once again, we are engaging him with our teammates, with the help of our teammates to get him out of the game. And now I can finally show off the Kleber gunboating. Using the high speed, kind of like the Kabarosk, just to annoy these enemy ships, light fires, and things like that. By continuing to sail around this direction, we're kind of creating a crossfire. Even though I don't have big battleship guns or torpedoes that'll reach, basically these battleships are going to have to either divide their attention towards me or all of my teammates bunched up just to the north of me. If they want to shoot me with their full broadside, they're going to have to turn and give my teammates their broadside. So I'm just going to keep sailing around here with impunity, lighting fires until I can get close enough. Already in the back of my mind, I, I'm hoping to get a good YOLO run on the Grosser Kerfers that's sitting behind the island over there. I don't at this point know how much health he has, but I know that Kansas is going to go down soon and we are going to push right into the GK and get him out of here. Like we showed earlier, the island is going to be the perfect staging point to get close to him without letting him shoot us much. But it turns out he doesn't have a lot of health, and even if he stopped or turned in hard here, those torpedoes are going to be enough to take him out, leaving me the key. Worth noting, if there's ever a lone battleship just out in the ocean like this, chances are it's already over for them. The ship is just simply too fast. And when they're alone and you're not under combined fire, it's very easy to rush and take them out. I feel that I wouldn't be a good community contributor unless I stated these kind of maneuvers should only be pulled when you know it's a guaranteed win. Not only in the game, but in your YOLO rush. You know that you're going to get the kill before they could possibly deal enough damage to you. The Yamato, I think, would be the only legendary tier battleship that could take six full torpedoes because it has the best torpedo reduction at the tier, and in that case, simply flip around and give them the business on the other side. That is, unless the game ends. <laughs> well, overall, I do hope you guys enjoyed the Gunboat Kleber, and I would suggest giving it a shot, seeing what you think. Maybe it's not the easiest destroyer to play, especially now with the reduced torpedo range, but it is absolutely still a blast to play, and in the right circumstances, can be a beast. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below, and of course I would appreciate it if you liked the video and subscribed for future content. Alright, catch you guys in the next one. See ya.